welcome to my party We're just getting started A life is a dream or a nightmare scarring Hand me a drink cause I think I'm going all in Get me a shrink who can catch me when I'm falling Cover up my scars, flip the handlebars Crashing in my car, wake up in a bar I'll be a superstar, just on my avatar this Hey guys, welcome to Story Demon I am David C. Hope, also known as Chris Author of the fantabulous Marav. You see where you see with that clear Marav. This is the paperback. <laughs> Too big to put on hardback yet. I'm not, am I getting rich and famous and Stevie King like they'll put it on hardback? But anyway, <laughs> and that's introducing. I don't think I had in the last show. I had a uh, uh, the poster and I had a guy make a frame in it. So that's all cool looking for the new edition. But enough about me. The real star of the show is the lovely and talented Celeste Prater. I'm author of multiple books in different genres like i'm in here somewhere which is a memoir for chad dean from my 600 pound life i don't know if yeah. you see it very well there work with a uh, celebrity on that one yeah i did a little uh semi auto uh, uh, autobiography and a or memoir and uh a how-to on uh someone who built a home from a paper house it was a person local here to me i thought that was interesting pretty cool so anyway and then my lovely visiting darkness uh, genre in uh, mystery crime thriller. Uh, this one's one I've uh, done screenplay on, and hopefully to get it into Hollywood one of these years. I'm hoping. Never know. And, Never know. And then one of my books, of my romance books, this one in particular is Soterios. He's from Russia. I know him. <laughs> I know most of my models that are on the cover. So hey, lucky me. But yeah, anyway, I've seen see pictures with one. you uh, posing with them. Yeah, when I did a book signing in uh, Hastings in uh, Waco one time, I had uh, had Calius with me, long haired, mm -hmm. and that's the only reason uh, women would come to my table for uh, to look at the books was this hunk was standing next to me. That's why I brought him. That's awesome. I didn't have to yell anybody a hawk anybody going, "Hey, come over here, look at me." It's like, "Hey, hunky man." It's like, Burr. I had all these people come over. <laughs> so they, I, know, I know. So we did. I did movies. And that's kind of what I spent most of my creative time in up until now. And the, you always say that you, you don't have favorites. They're all your children. But I know deep down I do have a favorite. And you're looking at it. But anyway, so do you admit that there's a favorite? Or do you, like, really can't say that you have a favorite? Yeah, of, of all the books I've written, Visiting Darkness is my favorite because I stepped out of the romance genre. Like I told you before, in one of the other shows I uh, went into writing erotic romance because I thought it was a little easier to jump in and get a traditional publisher. Mm -hmm. uh, from that point, I haven't gone to any other traditional publishers. They're all indie indie yeah. now because I've got a fan base that follows me. But, but of all my, uh, all my uh, 15 fueled by lust, uh, the last one I wrote is always my favorite. So it's like I get I write one and write another. Yeah, I like all of my books and feel by list. So that that yeah. series. I yeah, think I got two books left on me on that one. I think I think for me the whatever comes out that's truest to what you saw tends to be the one that you, you know, kind of favorite or kind of or at least partial to. Like this mm -hmm. this is the most this is the closest to to what I really saw in my head and the finished product, that's the closest I've ever gotten ever. The movies, we just never had the budget. Right. Uh, yeah. And, and it, it's, a, it's like uh, my first book, Druze, is the first one in the series of Feel by Lust. After I got to about my, my seventh or eighth book, I went, man, because of course my writing skills improved dramatically sure. over the years. So I would go back to Druze and go, oh, I feel so bad. I didn't really tell his story as much as I could have, you know? And so I did a rewrite of him. Yeah. My own. Of course, the publisher wouldn't put the new one out there. They go, now nah, that one's already out there, right? you know. So uh, I did the rewrite and I offer it free on my uh, website. So if anybody goes to celesteprater.com, you can get yeah. uh, the first book in the Fueled by Less series. Uh, I'll send you a PDF free. There it's go. got 33,000 more words in it. Wow. Okay. I mean, I bumped him up. So more world building, which is what we're, our topic is in here today. Which that was a perfect. beautiful segue. That was a masterful segue. I didn't even plan that one, so that that worked out really, really wow. well. Wow, you aced. That's a hail mary <laughs> touchdown. You got that one aced. It world building. I feel world like you're building. probably more of an expert on this 
but I'll start just for grins. Maybe maybe that's helpful because I'll start and then you can fix you can fix what I mess up. But we come to Marab, and I can only speak to whatever. When we did the movies, you didn't have to do a lot of world building in movies. You start it's visual. You can just you can convey things with just what you see. So if you show somebody that looks like a bum, you know automatically they've made some bad life decisions and they're a bum, right? Exactly. Or, or, so you've you've done a lot of the work just because you you see it. Or conversely, if I show them on a spaceship, well, they're either in the future or an alternate universe or on another planet or something. So that does a lot of work for you. And so I had to like use words to do. It. And I and I and and this is important. I think I wrote like these things, essays and articles, and even a timeline that I wanted to put in the book. And you were like, not no, but hell no. <laughs> to, to do that. No. And I was like, yeah, but the, it'll, they'll, I'll, I'll for sure have them in the world. And you're like, no, try harder. Mm-hmm. And what I did was, and I feel like now, in the, after the end of the first chapter, you have enough to know where, we, where you are and what you're dealing with. Now. Mm-hmm. Now. Because I just went ahead and, and, and did some tricks and things like in story to, to convey what the heck, where they were, what was going on and what they're doing and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, and it's so much easier, like you said, in the movies, because <laughs> you got an action line. Uh, they're running across a mountain path. And, the, you know, you don't have to really go into a lot of flowery detail about that no. damn mountain. You're going to find some location for you and do it. But when you're in that book, yeah, you've got to build that world in their brain for the the reader when they're reading it, this should be conveying back to them that. And when I'm also, when you're talking about world building, it's not only just this world of sci-fi and I've got three uh, moons above the alien planet. It's also the sequence of doing the world building, which is get that into their brain first. It's not, and it's not like you start out your book saying, we're at this location. There's three moons on the planet. They've got this going on. They've got that boring. Someone's going to lay that book down and be mm-hmm. mad that they even bought it from me. You have to build it around an action scene and around uh, some dialogue and, and uh, slowly feed to this reader that, mm-hmm. oh, they're in a, this, uh, like you did with Marab, which is, oh, now she's going to this base camp. You know, she's and she's yeah. driving the truck up, you know, and you're making notices of a, hey, there's a couple of tents and stuff like that. So you're building that world as they're coming into it. Mm-hmm. So it's not just a, this happened, that happened. There's, I've seen so many books that do this. Like, well, or they'll have this action happening and all of a sudden they'll stop long enough to tell you, well, then she's wearing blue. Yeah. Shirt and then, uh, you know, she adjusted her, you know, uh, green uh, dress. That's how you introduce parts of that world building world building building isn't just the world like explaining earth is talking about world building saying i'm i'm making this person or this character so realistic within this environment Mm -hmm. and it's how they're touching us by sight it's how they're feeling it's how they're smelling it all of that so anyway i'll let cut you loose on what what your idea that. So, so, so with with Marav, the, the the biggest reason why I wrote a essays or what have you for it is because I knew that the entire the entire universe that we're dealing with in Marav is like an alternate reality to what we have now, right? It's like it's like a little bit in the future, but pretty much like what we see here. But in the, but if our world could. Could, could could do deep space travel and have people on Mars. It's like now, but we can do Mars in these ways. Basically, what it comes down to, and um, and so, but I was really worried that the whole world was pretty much built on the premise is that there's an alien threat. We're not actively at war with them right now, but it's there. And mm-hmm. I thought if I had those essays and things, that would set that up because if you just look at it as a story, the aliens don't show up until. Like the end, yeah. Uh, page four hundred and seventy-five. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it really like literally like that. I was six hundred mm-hmm. page book. They don't show up till page four hundred and something. You know, when the the uh, this big attack happens, this big battle happens. And so mm-hmm. yeah, you're you're two, you're three fifths. I would say about three fifths of the way through at that point. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, if I don't establish these aliens in this world, 
people are going, to, what the hell is Unidom? What the hell? What? What? Why are this Unidom exist? What the hell is this? Mm-hmm. And you and you're like, but you can't do the essays, right? And mm-hmm. I, what I did was I figured out was like, well, I'll just have it be the anniversary of the, the this Pearl Harbor event that took place, which I always had that in mind that there was a Pearl Harbor event. That's mm-hmm. always part of the backstory. And but this it started you to like, yeah. Today was the anniversary of that, so she watches like a presentation commemorating it, and that's how we get the backstory. Mm-hmm. And, and exactly how you do it. That's how you keep your readers because it's it's during the normal course of their life that this stuff gets fed in that it doesn't seem like pause, let me tell you all this stuff. You know, like you have this narrator behind your head saying, and oh by the way, this you know, you did it perfectly through my guidance when I was teaching you to be an author, which is new. No, build it into as you're going. I, I, so, so so before I ask this, keep in mind I like where we're at. So what we did, I like. And, I, and what we did is better than what I was going to do. But for sake mm-hmm. of the show and educational purposes of the show, mm-hmm. why was it so bad to have a preamble or an essay or a prologue or whatever you want to call it, or even like the opening crawl of Star Wars? Why was it so bad to have something there that was that like not you- a story? What, what was so but, bad? About and that? hopefully we'll find this out from our next session when we have an actual reader come on and talk to us about their viewpoint. That's the plan is we're going to have a, a reader with, with my With my 600 books I read as a reader before I even became an author, I would – it's – and it's true to this day, even with the young folk, which is instant gratification. I want to be yanked into this world and dragged into it and so I can forget about what's going on around me. If I have to, if I open it up and I'm seeing this list of stuff and some big explanation before I get to the action and what's really going on in the story, I'm chunking you. I ain't got time. There's is it, millions of books out there. Is it millions. Tedious? Like what, what is it trigger that's so negative? Is it tedium? What, what is it? It feels like you're in school all of a sudden. I don't want to be in school when I'm reading a book, you know? So that's why I kept telling you, I said, if you want to, and it just drives you crazy about this, that you mention it somewhere in, in your book later on. If you want to learn more backstory of whatever, you know, uh, go to my website and I have a whole list. And you did that. You went and put the stuff on your yeah. website. Hey, you want to learn a little bit more in depth, a little back history, or you write later a prequel to it that gets them to yeah. that point. So they understand it. Yeah, what, what, what we ended up doing is I took those essays and material. They're actually on my website right now, and I've even posted them on Facebook for people to go there and check them out. I'm like, if you like Marab, you just want to see some more appendix material, go yes. over to the website. They're in the blog, and I went ahead and put uh, the timeline. I went ahead and put that little intro, whatever the hell it was, I guess a preamble, I guess you want to call it, and then mm-hmm. that essay type thing I wrote. It's all like the... the and I think it's all I had done was those three components. They're they're there on the website. So if, if somebody yeah. wants to geek out on that universe, they're there. But I just kept them out of out of here. Out like, of I said, like I said, I we made the right call, and I I like what we did. Mm-hmm. But I, it drove you nuts. It, it did drive me nuts. And I, to, and I have to admit, it still kind of bothers me a little bitty bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. That's your baby. You t- took all this time and effort to put it together to hope to have somebody have an understanding before they stepped into it, but you can't because you would lose more readers than you would gain. Well, because this, this is the argument I would make to you when we were doing the book, and uh, and, and I'll repeat it for everybody to see. My argument was always like, well, Tolkien put maps and crap in his. <laughs> How come Tolkien could put a map in his book, and I can't write a preamble, <laughs> or, a, or, a, or a or a timeline. Mm-hmm. I, but I guess I'm not Tolkien. So. Yeah, that's why I said uh, until we become Stephen Kings, we can't play. You know, or to be. Uh, you can't play with the rules. Oh uh, yeah, so I told you as your first time author, try not to break too many rules. You know, because yeah. we're already getting wild in there anyway you know it's a you know meats and guts and slashing and blood and dying and stuff so let's just stick with the formula and it, and what's so good though is and i'm talking formula not that it's a, a rote blah da 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 bop da 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 you know it, no. meaning catch them at the very beginning because remember i remind you i said hey when you go on amazon or, or you get posted on amazon by a traditional publisher they'll put it out there or you go indie and you do it 
what's it saying there? Look inside. And mm -hmm. so people will turn to the blurb to see what's it kind of little idea. And you only know 160 words to kind of clue somebody about what they're about to deal with. You so you can't go in a big woo-ha in there. But the look inside, they'll give you like uh, 20 pages. And so the first thing they're going to read is that first chapter. And if you don't catch them in that first chapter, you're a goner. Yeah. And if I opened up and says, read inside, and I'm seeing this little listing thing, like I'm going to read a textbook, I'm gone. So that's why I beat it into you to say, no, action scene first. And that's what you first try, which it's action scene. And then you wanted all this preamble. Then you start realizing this book is going to be 1,050 pages if I keep yeah. this up. So you took it out. And I was so proud of you for cutting off one of your fingers, basically, you know, yeah. for your book. Well, you always say, like, in movies, of course, I make all these new movie analogies. That's what I kind of cut my teeth on, really. But, you know, mm -hmm. you, get the, you, you watch a movie at theater, but then when it comes out on Blu-ray, it's the director's cut. And so because of time length or whatever reason, they got to put back all the stuff they're in. So my yeah. thought is, if, if I ever remember, like, stupid, successful, I'll just put out a director's cut of the book. <laughs> they'll just have that crap at the back, and they'll have all the extra meat at the back, and they yeah. can go here they want to. Or put, yeah, like put it in the back. Or what I would prefer as a reader is you take all that goody stuff that you have and all that. That to me was an outline of a very, very good prequel. Just write a you book. You could have a 200 page book yeah. prequel to Marav, which was going, and your uh, hardcore fans of Marav would go back and go, wow, there's some, right. you know, Easter eggs in there. Or there was something really cool. Now I understand. Oh, that makes so much more sense right. or something. And they'll get a kick out of that, getting to go back in time to see yeah. what. Oh, that's why the Rubery. Oh, the governor lost his eye at this time. You know, stuff like that. So you get to go yeah. back and explain through that prequel. So for people watching this, that you know, Marat doesn't mean anything to them. They're working on their own book. Right. What, where do we? Where do we tell them to start with world building? I, I know with that one and the other things I've worked on, I just sort of just knew. Yeah. And I don't know if I'm, well, I don't know if that's a norm. I don't know if I'm gifted that way. I don't know. I just knew the well, With your background in movies, yeah, you're a good story. I didn't story really have to like do any homework or like it was all in here and it just sort of come mm -hmm. to me and built upon in my mind. But if you've got somebody who's who, who's wanting to be an author and they're wanting to create a world, like I guess what are some exercises or things that you would say to, to do to the world build? Well, the the only thing I can say is that if you're even going to try to be an author, you better be one creative crazy person because mm -hmm. you've got to ha be able to to have this whole, like I said, world yeah. and people and characters and events in your head and be able to then transport that to uh, to your computer and put it in words and in a, in an order and sequence that's smooth for your reader to join you in that craziness of your brain. Yeah. So the so if you, so you ain't got that to start out with, so you, huh? see it, you see it too. You don't really have to world build and like write out like different things. You see well, it like I do. Well, when 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 do I see it as an author? When did you see it as an author? That you first came up with the concept, and when we talked over before in all our other podcasts, which is who are your characters? What is your your theme? Your goal of what you're trying to do in this this yeah. book, this world. And, and like as you're developing your character and where you're going to place them and have them start doing something, your action, what are you going to make this protagonist do? What are you going to make this antagonist do to the protagonist? Your world will build around you as far as your concept. OK, you will always have your concept like I, you had a concept. I want her to start out on Mars. I want her to be taken off Earth. So Earth is just this thing she can't go back to anymore. But, she, yeah. you know, I want the. Uh, uh, the room, the, the what was that one place where you said, I, I want the, the activity to happen where they're really getting really, really bad with the bad guy Devlin was on the Jupiter or something, you know? So you yeah. have this concept. Is it a concept uh, of it's a world that does not exist in anybody's brain whatsoever? I'm going to make this thing up as I go, you know, uh, walls morph and shit like Inception, whatever. Or you say, I am contemporary meaning it's uh, current day, um, yeah. I'm in Houston, you know, so let me know, go study about Houston. What's an area of Houston I want to write about? Or am I going to be all over Houston and then go to Georgia? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to take them to Georgia next, or I'm going to take them to Oklahoma. 
oh, I'm going to put them in Japan. You better know about Japan and mm -hmm. uh, make it realistic if you're trying to do that. So it's the, it's the concept. Get the concept first down. Uh, uh, make sure you know who your character is. Who's your protagonist? What do they deal with? What world are they in? Uh, where do they work? Where do they eat? And uh, who are they married to? And all this stuff. And all of a sudden, your world, your concept will come into play. And again, it's your genre, what we were telling you about before. Is he sci-fi? Is he contemporary? Is he historical? Oh, I got to take him back in time. Okay, what did the world look like then? Mm -hmm. Or can I make up a, a time uh, in the past that didn't exist? It's just all yeah. in your imagination, but you have to have the concept of where are you setting them? You're setting I, I would world say building. If somebody is an author or, or a new author and they're trying to do world building, they should just take a realistic approach of what that world would be, you know? So, like, with Unidom, you have, basically, there's two components of Unidom. There's a, 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 a traditional governmental type uh, uh, entity, and then there's a, a, a military application. And the military mm -hmm. application has shock troopers. And those shock troopers mm -hmm. are pretty much just like the military with, with different, you know, the traditional soldiers, right? You know, but to right. me, they look like a hierarchy know, of the society. And they have general, colonel. They have those, you know, private. They mm -hmm. have typical military type ranks. But then mm -hmm. you have, as a kind of the the between the 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 the, the governmental and the military, you have the DUI, DOI who are between. And they're like basically like the CIA, KGB, or what have mm -hmm. you. And with them, mm -hmm. you've got a hierarchy that's more civilian based, kind of like the CIA. And so, like, I knew, I knew that taking those there would be practical applications of each so if the shock troopers are military like then they're going to have ranks and then what are they going to use they're going to have some sort of uniform uniform and they're going to have also uniform means of travel and uniform mm -hmm. types of guns and that to me it's like a it's almost like a logic game and that's right the way i could put it so if you're going to put people in, you know, a, a fantasy world, you know, what do they drink? What do they eat? What do they wear? What do they use for money? Do they have what kind of toilets that you need to know, like the basic logical things mm -hmm. that makes it feel like a working world. I mean, the currency, I knew currency was going to come up in, mm -hmm. in, in Marav. So I made sure it just, they still use, use each country had their own currency. In fact, when she's on a mission, they give her a big stack of currencies and multiple currencies because if right. Japan, she needs the yen, and then she's or yeah, we got yen. That's right. Anyway, yeah. if she's in America, she needs the dollar, and so she they were they, they gave her what she would need to go to the different places. So to me, it was right. it was it was a logic game, you know. Mm -hmm. and I think it's it always, to explain to somebody. Yeah, and and, and once you have that, and you, and, uh, and I've always whenever I. Did reviews, not reviews, but uh, I did con uh, not contests. Where are they? Well, I guess they were contests, book contests for uh, new authors, where I would actually read a half a script, you know, maybe f um, ten pages of a of their manuscript, and then I would review it and give them help helpful tips and stuff. And and the biggest one was great. You pulled me in with some action, and then you started taking me here, and then I went there, and I I tell them I said, tell me what you're seeing in your head. Because I know they had some kind of idea about what they were going to do. They're all of a sudden, you take me into a room and you say, "Well, the 15 people over in this in the corner over there um, were making a lot of noise." But then I walked out onto the balcony. I'm thinking, and then uh, you know, the, but those 15 people were important to that particular part of the story. I'm thinking, you know what they are to me right now in my brain as a reader, a blob. There's this blob sitting over there. Yeah. So I'm walking through and I'm looking over. There's a blob making noise. But if those people are important to that particular part of the story, I was like, well, say, um, well, I got to meet Mrs. Um, Mrs. Uh, Brown, who had a penchant for uh, messing with her pearl necklace constantly. That's world building. You're taking in there and building that world by different actions of your characters, different actions. The, the wind swept the window open, you know, so all heads turned toward the, you know, so you're, you're letting your readers see that world as, as it's being created. From your brain onto that paper, for them to be able to siphon it up. To so many authors forget that you may think that you're telling that person, but just by writing down that she ran across the prairie to the oak tree. Well, how far was the prairie? Is there big, tall grasses there? Was her feet uh, sucking in mud? Was she, you know, it was like, come on, give me a little bit.
you know, just give me a list of build the world. What, in what I, what I, what I, but maybe a good exercise for some people, and I think I'm one of these, and I can see it now with my next project. Yes, I'm one of these, where it, just write, just write, just write it. Mm -hmm. just write, write it, yeah. Write, write, write a chapter. Don't worry about all this stuff. Just just write the damn thing. And mm -hmm. then yeah, the draft. It's your, the draft. Then it's when you do your cleanups and your second drafts and things that you're editing. That's when you mm -hmm. add these layers and layers of, of the world. And I think that to me, that is what I find helpful because if I get stuck in the minutia of what you perfect, might, perfect. might call world building, then I'm going to mm -hmm. think on the first still, and, and then I'm never going to get this damn thing written. So it's right, to right. Me, right. It, even the stuff that you're not going to see, like you're, I mean, you're my editor, so you're going to see at some point, but. I'm doing a draft right now and I'm doing it chapter by chapter. And what I'm doing is I just, I just write the damn thing. Mm -hmm. Susie went in here. Ted went there. They shot this. They did this garbage. Mm -hmm. And then you can build upon that as well, too. It, That's perfect. It's, it's, you can do that as well. Yeah. It's complete garbage for another human to read, but me, but mm -hmm. then I add all the color. It's like, it's like drawing. You just rough sketch and then you color it and, and make it nice. Mm -hmm. And so that, that's, I think that and we talked about that. In our, yeah, we talked about that in a pre previous uh, session, which was uh, the outline, which yeah. is trying to find your setting, your world, your characters, where you're putting them, and stuff like that. And like I said, it's like you can just freeform write what's going on there and organize it to get it down. Right. And you're doing that's exactly what you're doing. And I call it in the draft is when you do your little outline one liners, and then all of a sudden you'll find yourself writing a couple of stuff in. I've yeah. caught myself within a whole four chapters down or something. And I started really fleshing it out with dialogue and stuff. Cause it really caught my attention. Ooh, yeah. you know, and then I'll stop and I'll go back and build my way up to it. So it's, it's, it's like working with clay, different layers yeah. and stuff. I, I wrote it. The first, yeah, chapter, the, first thing to do this. the first chapter one we're on now is a Western and uh, well, whether it'll be published mm -hmm. or not, I, I don't know. I might get halfway through it and not like it. And who knows, but that's what I'm just doing now. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, the first chapter, I, I was really detailed about this one part, but then the next logical spot for the, for the yeah. chapter to go to, it's really bare bones. And oh, yeah. I did exactly what you always told me I did on the morale. I was like, you got really interested on something, and so you got real elaborate, but what you didn't care about as much, what you knew you needed, you're like, blah, 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 blah. Just over it, yeah. so I know damn well when I do my cleanup draft, I've got to make that 300 words, 200 words, whatever it is, a whole lot mm -hmm. prettier. Because right now, it would be like, it would be horrible. Yeah, and, and when you said the word minutia, that, that's also when you get stuck in the minutia. Sometimes you can get too much. You don't have to explain yeah. every single thing. No. Her. She lifted her arm up to it and then pressed it against her knuckles, and then yeah. she scratched her temple, and then yeah, she, yeah, yeah. you know, cleared her. You know, if you get too much into that, that will drive a reader off as well too. You got there's a fine balance there mm -hmm. of going. Okay, I'm going to take them just enough to let them know, and you still allow them to have their imagination that they can play with it. Like my character will be, uh, they know that it's got black hair. That my character and he's got green eyes and he's mm -hmm. got a chiseled jaw, you know, and a, and a streamlined nose or whatever. But the rest of it they can build in, you know, does he have a dimple somewhere? You know, the right. reader wants them to have a dimple in their chin, you know, or something like that. Put a right. dimple on their chin, reader. I don't care. You know, it's like I gave you just enough of my character yeah. that you can build it. But I don't want them to be the blob. I don't right. ever want my character to be the blob that's walking around in the blob of the world. You know, it's just like, uh, like a, it's like uh, going to a movie and all you hear in the dialogue and they never put it up on the screen. No. You don't see the stuff happening on the screen, but you're hearing the words. Yeah, what do you mean? Then that piss you Murder. off, make you Murder. mad because you're visual at that point. Yeah. They want to be visual on the paper. Yeah. So maybe uh, later we can re uh, read a paragraph or maybe a couple of pages, uh, pages, a couple of lines out of our book, like grab Marah, for example, right now and read me a passage. Just open it up and read a passage, one little line out of there. Oh, gosh. We're at the four minute mark, by the way. So, the, uh, oh, okay. First thing I just grabbed the gunship stopped firing and she used the concealing dust to look down the train. An entire section of the body lay 
resting miles back in the distance, and what remained of the last car was cut in half and falling apart as the train dragged it along. Blood still oozing from her wound, Marath popped up on the ore piled into an open top cargo car. Running across the rocks and down the train link, she ran from the silver car and Devlin's barrage. Mm -hmm. Of course, I could go on and on and on. Oh, yeah. So what you're doing is you're building it. You're, yeah. you're saying, I'm my, and it all goes back to POV, point of view. So it's in Marath's point of view. So I always told you, well, we're going through the, through the, through the uh, book, which is, are we still going? Yeah, three minutes. Okay. I was telling you when we're going through the book and doing the editing, which is if she's turning to the right, you can picture it in her head, turning to the right, she, whatever she can see in that field of her vision, that's the world. Mm -hmm. Or what she can hear, how far can she hear? 500 yards? 1,000 yeah. yards? What can she smell? How far away is the smell? Right. You know, and I don't care what Devlin thinking or feeling or anything. It's in her point of view at that moment. And she's watching this stuff happen. So you can't say he, uh, she saw the bad guy run around the side of the building and he was over there loading his gun. Yeah, How yeah. in the hell is she going to see him loading his gun? Yeah. So that's the world building part of it is yeah. while it's happening, it's realistic unless she's got x-ray vision like Superman. You know, so yeah. the significance of his distance from the others led Max to believe Frankie recovered a little bit of humanity and decided to honor the victims by re ensuring their killer never got close again even the sheet claimed an unusual color puke green muted against a sea of pristine white a soft voice pulled his attention away from jason jason's loved one so instead of me sitting there and going mary's over in the corner with this uh that has to be her body over there mary's in the corner with a green puke, mm -hmm. puke green sheet over there and uh there's a bunch of gurneys over here with white sheets on them instead of saying that i'm making um max have this feeling about watching this, you know, a little bit of humanity was restored to the guy who did that or whatever, you know? So that's your world building. When someone's observing something that you could be planting other ideas in there of why they're seeing this particular stuff, or why they're at that location. And it takes practice, practice, practice over and over and over. Read and read and read other people's books. Don't copy yeah. them, learn from them. So, Go pick up my book and read, and you will understand about world building. Pick yeah. up Marav and you understand about world building because we we beat that into to you about world building and point of view and you know mm -hmm. things that make sense in sequential order and stuff. So, <laughs> all right, well we are running literally out of time, so we're going to call it good there. But we're going to end them with our salute, and I will put up pictures of oh. the book. Okay. Alert. So, so people can go find my book. Oh, I'll put I'll put a picture picture up. I'll put a picture picture up for everybody. Picture, to see. Picture. Where is it? I can't see. Them. So yeah. I'll, I'll, put, I'll, I'll put a picture up of the book so they can see them and send them tell them where to go. But anyway, with that, hey, readers, show. readers, we love you. We are all we're trying to do is help you here. We, uh, I don't know. Uh, do you have a place for people to put comments? Whatever. Just. Tell us if yeah. we're lacking on they, this. They can do comments. Okay, ready for the slit? Ready for the slit? Here we go. Yeah,